Hey, it's Rob. Welcome to Axis Garage. We're out here with Jeff. Working on the avalanche, trying to get him set and ready. And what we have is vehicle lifted up in the air. And that's really not for this job. That's for another job that we're doing today as well. But right now, we're putting in rear shocks. Previously, we did the front shocks and it, it changed the ride quality tremendously. The shocks were shot. So from the looks of the rear shocks, they're pretty bad. Although we don't get the bouncing that we did in the front. But when you hit a bump, you do get a little bit of harshness. So although we were looking around for shocks, the only shocks that came up for a stock height in the rear were the 4600 Bilsteins or Bilsteins or Bils, Bils shocks. So um, in the front, you know, we had put the keys in and we lifted the front up. We didn't put a, we didn't lift it. We just leveled it, but it did come up nearly two inches or, or around two inches to get it level. So it was an easy listing to find the shocks for the front in the, I guess it's the 5100 series because they had uh, one that was designed for just a, a small amount of lift. I think it was anywhere from like a, a zero to two inches or two and a half inches or something like that. It was an easy listing. However, it wasn't an easy listing for these. So I went directly to Bill's website. I put the vehicle in um, and I was able to get a, a zero lift rear shock in the 5100 series. Uh, here's the part number. And I will link it, of course, in the description below. About a hundred bucks a pop. I bought it on Amazon, that was uh, where I found it. Actually, the best price, well not necessarily the best, but with shipping, the best price. And they are the 5100 series, just like I had in the front with the, um, I don't know what kind of finish you, you call this. It's, I think it's just like brushed aluminum, I don't know or maybe it's got a zinc coating on it. I have no idea what the finish is, but it's the 5100 series. It's for uh, no lift applications in the rear. And we're gonna get these in. <clears throat> and hopefully his rod will be nice. Now you don't have to lift it up. We got it lifted, makes it a little bit easier for you guys to see what we're doing and get a camera under there. But you don't have to lift it up. We got it on jack stands under the axle. So it's sitting like it normally would, just giving us a little bit more crawl room underneath. And we're going to do some other projects today while we're out here. we got a nice, cool spring day to get some of this done. But we're going to take you along for the shocks, and I'll move the camera, set up the GoPro, get it underneath, and I'll show you what we got. Back on the GoPro, and yeah, I'm using a Hero 3. Believe it or not, I still have a Hero 3 that works. And I know the sound isn't going to be as good, but getting under the truck it's a lot easier with the GoPro so we have the old shock here uh, there's a little bit of, of yellow in the rust left from the original and it's blue up top which is a Bilstein or Bilstein or Bilstein color and we believe that the the factory ones probably were Bilsteins so all the bolts are 19 nuts and bolts they're all 19s you got a bolt and a nut bottom bolt and a nut top nothing crazy nothing complicated I brought a variety of, of 19s. What I will do right here is I'll give a little spritz on the nut and I'll go up top and I'll get that top one with a little spritz of, uh, of what do I use here, the Seafoam Deep Creep. And then we'll go at getting them out. So on the bottom, I'm just going to put a wrench on it there and I'm going to take my little stubby see if I can get in past these emergency brake cables and that one buzzed out pretty easily hopefully the top will be just as easy we'll see now up top you can this is a little plastic thing here you can go in either way However you think, I think we're just going to put the combination wrench right here on the bolt side. The nut side is up 
over the chassis rail and I think we can get in there from the other side I don't have the spare tire in right now which is probably giving me a little extra room And that one came out fairly easily as well. However, the bolt itself is still stuck in there a little. So I'm going to pull the bottom bolt out. So with the bottom bolt out, I can release the, the bottom, which gives me a little playroom. bolt doesn't want to pass that little plastic thing but you could work it out without taking that plastic off so this is the plastic that I'm talking about mine had a crack in it already if yours isn't cracked or not flexible enough to pull it away there's some clips you could undo and pull that plastic uh, inner fender it's like a lower inner fender liner out of the way a little bit if you need to not too tough pretty self-explanatory to get that out so it's a pretty straightforward shock install what I did want to show you was the bottom right so the rubber had completely separated from the shock itself you can see how this is just floating around in there and although the shocks They're a little, a little loose. They don't feel horrible. They don't feel anything like the fronts did. Um, but the, the separation of the, the bottom, they needed to be changed. I could squeeze them, you know, fairly easy with a, the new shocks. It's very difficult to, to squeeze them. And I could, I could hold them from pushing back down really easy. And that's, you know, an indicator that they're bad especially when you can hold it back because you want the shocks to have that outward pressure so that they're constantly keeping the wheels on the pavement so that the wheels don't skip. But pretty straightforward shock install. You don't have to jack the vehicle up like I did. I just did that to make it a little bit easier um, to video and for the next little project we have to do. That's it today. I'll link everything in the description below. And as always, thanks for watching.